Welcome guys to another episode of the Sweet Machine Channel. Today, customer complaint. Apparently this pickup doesn't go, and the customer wants it to go. Let's see what the paper says. Right. So he states, customer states that the truck is stuck. Mmm, sounds ominous. In gear, or transfer case is locked up. Fix it. Uh, I gotta tell my service writer to stop giving me the stuff so we can actually do restoration work instead of, oh, actually these repair workers are gonna be paying my bills to do the restoration work. So, we kinda need to fix it. So, apparently it's stuck in gear. He dropped the forward or the front axle drive line out because it's a four wheel drive pickup to roll it. Sounds like we got some drivetrain issues. I better not be pulling a transmission. Right, so season F250. Nothing terribly exciting. It's got that 4x4, lovely feature. It is, oh, hold on a second. I forgot, it's the XLT Lariat. <whistles> Putty, right? Uh, the transfer case is a manual. Oh. Okay. That's nice. Um, we got drivetrain issues, I think, possibly. Let's pop the noisemaker hood up and we'll see what we got. Do, 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 do. Right, over there. Now, when we towed it in, this pickup has been sitting for about two years. And last night when we towed it in, I noticed we had a little bit of a puddle situation, which is kind of bizarre for a pickup that's set for two years. And the only thing, and it doesn't run, doesn't have a battery in it. So that told me it smelled like brake juice. And I'll show you guys what's going on. This is always fun to do with one-handed camera. You guys always like this on YouTube's. Right. And immediately, when I opened it up, I opened it last night because I don't like uh, oil smells very much out of vehicles that have been sitting. I don't want them to make a mess. So we, I opened it up yesterday, and I woke up to all this brake fluid everywhere. That's, that's not a good sign. I don't know if the reservoir is pressurized or not, and it's leaking. I don't know. Unfortunately, it did spray up to the hood, which if you guys know, uh, in the automotive business, for those who don't know, brake cleaner will eat paint in a heartbeat. And I immediately tried to get it off, and unfortunately the paint started to come off. So I could get some touch-up spray for that, but I'm not quite certain. But we need to get this pickup going first. That's cosmetic, so we might have to fix upon that. So what kind of motor is this? I think this is the 5.8. It says 5, 5 liter or the 5.8. I love it when Ford does this. They don't tell you right away what it is. All right, so what engine is it? Well, looks like she's the 5.8. Let's check the oil in case we do have to run this motor right quick. What have we got? Focus. Eh, it's it's on the darker side, but it's not completely dark, so do this one-handed. So, if it got oil, it got oil, so it'll start. If we do have to start it, let's just check the vitals here. This is not a will it run episode. This is a repair episode. What? Why is that coming off? Oh, there we go. Well, who's got fluid? You guys probably can't see that, but there you go. So it's got some fluid in it, so we can run it. Not a problem. Let's take a look at the drivetrain, see if we can make heads or tails of what the drive line is without even starting this thing up. Let's take a look at the underside. I was looking, I went, oh, it's uh, shiny, but he actually disconnected the drive line rear and forward. So apparently we've got some issues possibly with the transfer case. First of all, I noticed, you know with that four-wheel drive on the floor, that stick that was loose, okay, that controls, that's basically how you shift in four high, four low, two high, and all that fun stuff. There's the rod. It's actually broken. So, it's supposed to be on there, right? So we're gonna be able to actually pull that rod uh, selector shifter right out. 
maybe it's gonna go in. There we go. Uh oh. We lost a shifter. Oh no! Okay, so one broken gear shift selector. Man, it just sheared right off. Uh, that's a little disturbing. So, gear shift lever removed. Put it in park. I made sure the transmission's in park. In theory, this should be in park. This should not roll. But it's rolling. So, with that gear shifter out, I don't know if our transfer case is a neutral or not. So, we gotta put the battery in it, turn the truck on, maybe just even just key on, and see if we can get some, the idiot's lights to pop up. See what range it's in. There should be a neutral light, a four high light, and a four low light, come on. Let's, let's do that and see what the computer slash sensors are telling us. Where this box is. Hoorah! As a positive first, I'm just so positive. <laughs> that's because here, yeah? See, if you go here, then Tyson sets up, yeah? Where's the ground cable? We need a complete circuitry. Looks like we got an aftermarket alarm system in here. That's gonna be fun if this wakes up. Where is the ground wire at? Well. Oh, there it is. Found it! Of course the battery's backwards. There, whatever. Let's pray this alarm doesn't wake up. Aha! <laughs> the alarm is going off. <sighs> Great. Well, we're gonna disconnect that right now. Wow, man, that hurt my ears. Can we have some peace and quiet now? Well, yes, yes we can. Ah, there's a sensor because the hood's open. I swear I'm gonna rip this whole alarm system out by the time we're done with this. I really hope that this alarm system is not tied into the ignition system because I do not want to be rewiring this thing. We have no nut on there. Perfect, just. Hold please. We, it claims, it is in four-wheel drive and in low range. Let's see if this thing even starts. Been sitting for a couple years. Claims it's got a little bit of gas in it. It'll cycle the key for it to pump it again. Hey! Building oil pressure, that's good. Good side. There's something wrong. She's stuck in 2000 RPM. There's something wrong with this girl. She's stuck at 2000 RPM. She does not want to kick down. Huh. Oh. Smoke, 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 smoke. Smoke. I think that's from the brake fluid hitting the exhaust manifold. <laughs> oh, it's been a while since she ran. Open up the doors quick. There. Ooh, she's a little smoky. Apparently, we've got engine shenanigans going on too. Do I have any liquid on the floor? No, no oil on the floor, so that's a positive, I guess. So we're verifying our throttle plates are working. Yep, they both open and shut. So that's good. I'm gonna go on a hunch. This is your idle air control valve. We're gonna manually override this and see if this thing will stay idling without it. 
So I'm going to be manually controlling the idle bypass circuit basically by keeping it cracked open with the gas pedal. Okay, class, what has we learned? Oh, you guys. You guys are killing me! Okay. So, we unplugged the all control valve. I manually kept it going, the engine going, just by stepping on the gas pedal and keep the throttle plate just slightly cracked open and it ran, it idled pretty darn perfectly. So that tells me there is a sensor somewhere deep in this under the hood that's causing that idle, idle control circuit to stay max open. Now what sensor is lying to the computer that's commanding that idle solenoid to stay max open? I don't know. We're going to have to figure that one out. But, since we temporarily were able to fix the idle control, let's drop the truck into gear and see if it at least engages uh, in the transmission. Hold, please. Perfect. Power steering pump a little bit growly, just like on the 74. Okay, reverse. Drive? Yep. Transmission works. That growling is the parking growl. Not parking because the drive line's still spinning as I had it in gear. So I just threw it in neutral, shut the truck off. So we're pulling down a transfer case and fixing the idle issue on the motor and fixing the brake leak, if we can find it. This is gonna be a long day. This is gonna be a one long sesh. Right, found the problem why our idle wants to go, whoa, whoa, 1500 to 2000 RPM. Yeah, idling at 2000 RPM. That is not good. Let me show you guys. So our throttle position sensor is wrong. That is not a good value. Fortunately, on these old fuel injection systems, they're actually really easy to work on. They're not that bad. Don't be a parts placer. No, 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 no. Figure out what the problem is. 1.86 volts. That is no good for a throttle position sensor. Uh, on this particular system, well, on most old systems like this, you got a five volts for reference, you got your ground, and you got your signal, which is here. That needs to be one volt. Basically, what that's telling me is, is the throttle position sensor is lying to the computer and saying, hey, we got a 20% throttle load already. Hence why the engine wants to rev up between 1400, 1500, and 2000 RPM. And if we do the full sweep with the blades, throttle blades, we get 3.6 volts. That should be closer to four and a half volts at wide open throttle. So we got a throttle position sensor that's gone. Replacing. <laughs> Got one. Now for the other one. Yes. Yes. Look at that. Woo, I got nervous. Right, just came back from the parts store. We got nice new shiny throttle position sensor, yes. Okay, mounting hardware. Brand new stainless steel. That's right, we upgraded. Stainless steel screws. 
Perfect. Back to the truck. Perfect. So got my lead hooked up. 0.94 volts. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. The other one, it was almost 1.9. It was almost over a whole volt. One volt set this thing spinning up to 2,000 RPM. That's all it takes, guys. Let's do a full sweep and see if we can get up to close to 5 volts on wide open throttle now. I hope it stays connected. So this would be full sweep. Nice, 4.5, exactly where it should be. Let's go, here we go. Contact. Been sitting a little bit longer than that. When I say two years, I got smoke coming everywhere now. Manifolds, valve covers, no fire, but I can't breathe in my shop. <coughs> so I'm gonna let my shop air out for a few minutes. Hello! Now we work on the underside. The belly of the beast. Let's pull the transfer case off. Let us drain the Earl. Except my stuff's clear over there. Aye. Too much backing around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ha! I lied. We're not draining the Earl first. We're pulling the uh, cross member off first. Psych! Come on, get off. There we go. You joints. Oh, what flavor are these? Oh, Trans Am Hologram. I'm in the middle of recording Trans Am Hologram. What's going on? Yar. Yar. Yaw. Okay. Bye. Bros of once. Let's pull the cycle. You won't be on tape or not? It's fine. Yeah, but... Have you have you seen the shift rod yet? No. Wait. Okay. I'm gonna reveal it to you guys. Tell me how much impact this has this is the this is the shifter to put this thing in the two high, four low, and four high. What do you think kind of force takes it to bust that thing off? Look at the bottom, it's sheared off. <laughs> right? Oh, it's all, yeah, yeah. So, the complaint was that this thing was revving too high well, actually, it wasn't even complaining. I just found out because it's been stored for two years. The previous owner uh, just gave it to the, or sold it to the other guy, and they didn't even, or not able to even jumpstart it. So, um, what I did is I got the truck running, and it was revving at 2,000 RPM. So, what I'm thinking is they dropped it into gear when it was white hot, but I'm not really certain. So, Ooh. Yes. Ooh. she's a. Uh, She's a little cranky. A little bit. He hasn't run in a while. I command a few. And it's just laughing at me. Let's have some er droppage of the Earl. Wait a minute, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Whoa! That is nasty. Nice. 
nasty. Looks like motor oil. That's all that was in there? This thing's bone dry. This thing's bone dry, what? Am I missing something? What the heck's going on here? Wow. You guys saw that? That's all that came out. That's all that came out. That's it. What in the shenanigans is going on here? I wonder if this dang thing exploded. Maybe we got a big hole in the top with a transfer case. Yeah, now it's just dripping. We got a big problem, guys. That's all the only the oil that came out. This thing's supposed to have at least what? Two, three quarts? There's nothing in here. Okay. Contact. What? Hold up. Pull. Ah. 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 Rolling over here. Ah, it's making a mess, eh? I don't like messies. Okie dokie. This is where the fun might just begin. Alright. Really? Oh! There we go. Going down. She's out. Right. Let me get my dainty little gloves on. There we go. Right, here's the gold. So we had transfer case that's broken here, yeah. How that sheared off, I still don't know. Um, trying to get it into a different ear. Oh, it's, it's stuck, it's jammed. Then this is the uh, transmission output shaft. So this would be the transfer case input shaft. Write this down. You guys can hear that or not. You hear that? Let's try that again. Yeah, that's, um, she's free spinning. And co considering that the pickup set was in four low, we're bus opening a transfer case. There we go. Well, I don't see anything. I see uh, some sharding, some shards there. That pin on that planetary gear set is way further down than that one. And oh my goodness. Found the problem. After I pulled the chain off, looked over here where the oil pickup is for the pump. Yeah, I know what that goes to. That's supposed to go right here. That's supposed to be wedged in there, broke free, like that. Another catastrophic failure occurred. This is the tube for the oil pickup. Right, so it's the section, so it's supposed to come in here. The oil pump on this is right, it's supposed to go in that little nipple, right where that hole is. Okay, that's the oil pump. So this nipple, where the hose would have been connected to, 
goes in right there. It actually sheared off. So we got this triangle piece here. It's supposed to keep this assembly from rotating because it's supposed to be locked in right here. Right? It's supposed to be locked in between those two, um, two guides right here. So that's sheared off. Causing the oil line to rip off here, off the oil pump, causing things to spin which are not supposed to spin, and wiping out the oil pump, reducing pressure down to zero, and just literally burning everything up. Great. Planetary gear set may or may not be welded together. Those sun gears... Nope. Oh. Nope, that's not welded. But it's completely shot. Look how blue that is. I mean, these are these are all junk now. Make a good paperweight, though. So, there you have it. Paperweight. Great. Hmm. Not much of a washer now. Parts run. Here's the good case. Runs through all the ranges good uh, by free hand. Thank you to my guy in Washington. Thank you very much, my man. You know who you are. You got the link for this video. Appreciate that. We're going to take this good transfer case. Again, this is the same Borg, Borg Warner 1356. We're going to split the cases apart, show you what the finger's supposed to look like, because this one is actually working. You can feel it. And we'll show you guys how we're going to bulletproof this one and put it back in the pickup, get this monstrosity out of here, and then we're gonna get to the next project. Yay! So, let's turn into the good one. So these 1356 cases, you guys might be asking yourself how to get this, these big ugly snap rings off the, that would be the output shaft or the tail. Well, you need one of these. Yes, these are snap ring pliers. I have a gargantuan proportion, okay? Uh, it is OTC4513. I uh, just Google that Amazon, or link is in the description below. Uh, I had to slightly modify these. These are for more of your Traco, your Baco. Goes up to six inch snap rings is what these use. But the, I found that these are the only ones halfway beefy enough to get these nasty snap, ring ply, uh, snap rings off. Uh, I had to do a little bit of grinding on here just to help scoot it in a little bit closer to the input shaft and had to grind down uh, the, ta the tabs or tongs or whatever you want to call them right here to get them into it because this is these are just barely bigger. However, when these are fully closed, you can get some pretty good snap rings still in there. Uh, fairly small, uh, about 5 16 So let me show you how we remove the snap rings with a big set. Now these are expensive. They're about you know, $80 on Amazon. So um, not cheap, but they work great for not ruining your snap rings. So if this is a good snap ring, notice it's nice. Oh yeah, that's really nice. This is a bad one. That's what happens when you don't have the right tool. But I knew I had a broken case anyways. I need to go get a better case. So, okay. Expand it up just enough. I kind of had to grind a little bit here on the nose of the plier itself as well. But here we go. Uns volas. Is that you hop it? Maybe one more. Just like that. I usually do the last part by hand so the thing doesn't go bing all over and it disappears. There you go. One perfectly good snap ring. Mm hmm. Shifter fork, one of two. Snap ring here on your four wheel drive, on your front drive, which you can get with a regular screwdriver. Dang it. You guys really shouldn't need much to get this one off. Couple of picks or small screwdrivers, this one's not doesn't have a whole lot of pressure on it. There we go. Ah, 
That's off. Washer. Chain. Comes off as unit. There you go. Alright. Aha! Alright. I'll show you guys what's going on this one. This one, we can save this one. How these fail is this finger, which is hardened steel, will rub through this very soft magnesium or sometimes these are aluminum cases. Hard part will always conquer the soft metal, right? So that's what happens. This guy will start wallering and going in and out like that. You can see how it's etched away already? Now it's not through the case yet, which is good. That means we can save this piece. But, as you can see, eventually that thing's going to waller all the way through. Therefore, this whole piece breaks loose and this whole pump free spins, snapping the nipple off as you've seen previously on the, our bad one. And this one gets wrapped around here, gets all nice and mangled, like this. All right, that's what it's supposed to look like. Pressure goes to zero, and everything psh, grenades. Perfect. So the reason why these thing, this transfer case failed in this pickup was not because of a high running engine idling 1500 to 2000 RPM. This pickup actually I'm sure of it now had two separate problems. After researching this, realizing that's an Achilles heel of these things, um, we had two separate issues with the pickup. So we fixed the idle already. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fix this, we're gonna bulletproof this, and then we'll carry on. Okay, so here's my idea. I found some square stock sitting on my shelf, welded it all up, so it looks something like this. I decided not to drill through and use a bolt method because I really don't want it leaking. This guy is going to be doing some pulling with the pickup. So we're going to keep everything internal. And it just happens that this square stock slides down in there just perfectly. So now all we have to do is I got our finger, I zip zip it off and then it's gonna go in here on top of there I'm gonna weld this into here so this will become one piece final testament fit I'll show you guys what's going on here Put that up there bring that up there okay there you go So now this thing, I left just enough at the bottom, at the bottom of the here, so it floats. So we got a little bit of floating, and you can see she's nice and locked up. That finger is not going anywhere for many, many years. And it still has just enough bottom that it bottoms out on the shaft, not on there. So everything's still kind of non-binding, kind of floating still. So, I'm going to bolt everything back up now, and we'll put it in the truck. A little trick, this gasket here, if you're dealing with gaskets like this, there's no metal dowel to keep it centered. Get some RTV sealant all around there, make it nice and sticky, that gasket will stay on there. Maybe a little bit down here, keep the bottom end from walking out. All right, got a little bit of silicone in the transfer case. That's great. I'm gonna stop being dainty and just send it. There we go. So now, this might stay in place a little bit more. There you go, you get the general idea. I don't think this is gonna work. I'm be able to just he-man it in. All you really gotta do is get on the tail spline. Sure, that's easy. What? Transmission jack? <laughs> you guys are weird. No, I don't have one. Mm. 
da, 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 da. Well, sort of. Spines are on, which means we can rotate, assembly, thusly, and that's as why to call me the speed machine, yeah. Except I don't have blonde hair though. So, brackets. Got, got it re-welded up. She's not pretty, but she works. Fairly solid, 6011 rod for deep penetration, so she should hold. Painted it four blue because I figure that's additional two horsepower. Yes. Okay. The remounting of the shifter. Figure this while the drive lines are out and the cross members out. Ooh. Nah, I'm not that scary. Although, if you ask my family, <laughs> torqued. Mark, mark, mark. Guys, don't know that reference. It's because I'm getting too old. Uh, clues in this word, Jim Henson. That's my boy. Why? Because I'm such a little kid. There we go. Sift linkage is on. Now we need to get the shift lever. I <laughs> don't know where those bolts went off to. Um, oh, this is gonna be fun to figure out where I'm gonna do that. Really? Wait, oh, oh, was it one? Ah, that's too big. Well, no, that's for the U joint. Get it together, man. I think I gotta do this in reverse order. There we go. That's some stuff. There we go. Go. I usually use a pump this up. Right, here we go. Pumpage! There we go. Pumping. Oh, this is gonna take a minute. There we go. Now she's pouring out on the regular. Make sure when you tighten this, you tighten this to 170 foot pounds. That way the next guy doesn't have to worry about it and it'll never fall off. <laughs> It was a joke, people. Well, here's a situation with the antifreeze. Ooh, isn't that lovely? Mmm. Yeah. For an old school, conventional American vehicle, it's supposed to be the green or yellow. Or any other of the color of the rainbow would probably do. This is just nasty baby poop brown. This is, uh, I'd say, 1970s brown. It's so wrong. So I'm going to have to flush out the cooling system. But I got everything buttoned up, so let's test on her. See if that trans uh, see if that transfer case works. <laughs>
do it for this episode, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next repair video or will it start video. Uh, which should be the Jervis truck, hopefully. So, catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Stick around if you want more. Welcome by you. Welcome. No, really, where's the ground cable at? Hello? Hello, McFly. No, really, where's the ground cable at? No, I'm not making this up. I don't. Down here? No, that's positive. Well, what? Ha ha ha, much better. Stand by. Okay, let's see here. Ooh. XLT. Don't oh, sound very good though. Anywho, that's what I'm working on. How much battery got? Oh, why did it turn green? Oh, night shot. Let's turn that off. We don't need that. There we go. Oh, hey, hello. Why isn't this in focusing now? What? Hello? Ooh, look at them beautiful nails. Now focus. Is this thing on manual? Exposure auto, that's nice. Oh, what's going on here? Where do you want to focus? There you go. You pile. I have five eighths. Is it nine sixteenths? No. Going down. Or maybe not. So these thirteen fifty six cases. Some of you guys might be. Uh, uh,